All right, here's another installment in this series about ear training and musicianship skills that are important to metal but don't get talked about as much in traditional ear training courses. This is the second of these videos that I'm making, but really maybe this should have been the first one because the concepts in this video are kind of building blocks for the changing meter stuff that I talked about in the first one. The name of the game today is subdivisions. You do talk about subdivisions in most ear training courses, and in later courses you might do some pretty tricky rhythmic sight reading and dictation, but not with the same emphasis on precision or to the same uh, level of difficulty as what routinely happens in metal. Basically, if you're going to play metal, you've got to be pretty comfortable with hearing and playing precise subdivisions of the beat up to fast tempos. This means that if we have a beat, we can divide it in half, which would give us eighth notes, We can divide it into three, which would give us eighth note triplets. And already I'm getting kind of bored. Luckily, there are a few metal songs that have versions of what I call the subdivision game that we can use to practice these things and have more fun. Here's the first one. The essence of this one is that it goes from 16th note triplets to 16th notes and then to 8th notes. So something like this. But the actual riff is more complicated. There's all sorts of other stuff in between these changes of subdivision. Dealing with these subdivisions in this more complicated context just makes it better practice. This example has some twists and turns, but the subdivisions it uses aren't too weird. The next example uses a less common one. Here, there are eighth note quintuplets, then eighth notes, then quarter note triplets, and finally quarter notes all in a row. So basically we have two beats of music, and that's at first being divided into five equal parts, then into four equal parts, then three equal parts, and finally into two equal parts. Feeling and being precise with these quintuplets up to tempo is a fun challenge. As a side note, this sort of messing around with different unusual subdivisions is the basis for some of the stuff that Carbom does where it feels like the beat is slowing down or speeding up uh, when really it's just the subdivision that's changing and the beat is staying steady. Something cool happens in the second half of these chorus sections too. The subdivision framework is the same, but they leave out some of the attacks. This is another great way to get even more solid with these unusual subdivisions. And when you put it all together, it is certainly very alligator cool. Quintuplets are cool and all, but this next example takes things a step further. Uh, 
what's going on with this? It's the same kind of pattern that the Gojira and car bomb examples had, where it goes from fast subdivisions to slower ones, but here the subdivisions are even more unusual. This song has a bunch of riffs that do this with different subdivisions. I'm just going to talk about the first version after the intro burst, which goes from septuplets to quintuplets to sixteenths to triplets. So again, we have two beats, and we're at first subdividing that into seven equal parts, then five equal parts, then four equal parts, and finally three equal parts. I love the riffs in the song, which, like the Gojira and Carbomb examples, manipulate the subdivisions to make it feel like things are constantly slowing down, even though the tempo never actually changes. Using these unusual prime number subdivisions, like sevens and fives, gives it a lot of really nice rhythmic shadings. You'll almost never have to play septuplets in metal, and even quintuplets aren't too common. But getting your time solid with these subdivisions will probably mean that no subdivision will ever give you trouble again. Things can get more complicated, of course. If you want to check out Imogen's Puzzle by Psyopis, that's a more drawn out, more complicated study in different rhythmic ratios. But that would definitely be beyond the scope of a basic metal ear training course. The more important thing is getting comfortable with, which as always means being able to accurately play, identify, and transcribe subdivisions up to pretty fast tempos and up to quintuplets or maybe septuplets if you're feeling saucy. Anyways, thanks for watching, and if you haven't, please let me superscribe to you. See ya.